Hi, my name is Thomas Foster and this is a tutorial on the new sampler of Logic Pro 10.5 from Apple. If you give me about 20 minutes of your time, I show you how to use the sampler, how easy it is to have fun and create your own sampler instruments. So enjoy! The first thing we're gonna do is to load a new software instrument. We load the sampler multi-sample stereo. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we take a vocal sample from your finder or directly from Logic and drop it on the sampler. Now we have two possibilities, chromatic or optimize. Let's start with chromatic. And if you go on chromatic, you have two possibilities, zone per file and split at silence. Let's start here with zone per file. All right. Here is the sampler and you immediately see at the moment you can play just on the C1. And the original root key is also C1. So we can change it here that we say we want to play it also until the C3. Or we can change it here in the graphic with the mouse. The root key we only can change here. At the moment it's C1, let's say the root key is C2. So what is the root key? That's the original version. Here you hear the sample in the original key, in the original pitch. But we also can play it in a low version or higher version. All right. At the moment there is a little bit of silence in the beginning. But we can change this with this little arrow here. We move it to the beginning of our sample. I also can play it on the keyboard. Here also I can play it polyphonic. But you see, if I play it on many keys, it's if it's higher, it's also faster. But we can change this just by clicking this button here. Now, now we can play chords and they all have the same timing because with this button we activate the follow tempo. So let's import a second sample. Maybe we stop this here at the E and now we import also a man vocal and we drop it directly here in this graphic of our zones. And now we say it's we can play it from F2 to F3 and the root key is on C3. Feel so good. Let's cut it a little bit so we can play it faster. Wonderful. Maybe we want a little fade in. We could do this here. So good. So good. But in this case, it's fine like this. So we have now two samples on the same keyboard. And we can say for each sample from where to where we want to play it and where is the original root key. So let's try another example. Let's delete these two samples. And here I have some keyboard notes of a Rhodes piano. Now we have a higher note. Now we have a lower note. And I want to drop them all on this keyboard here. But it's a lot of work. You have to figure out what is the original key and you have to place all the samples here on the keyboard. But there's a much easier way. We take all the samples, move it to the sampler. And now we go here to optimized. And here we say zone per file. And now Logic is analyzing exactly the key of our samples. And now it's already in the right order. And we also have the right root keys. There's an even faster way to do this. And this is amazing. Imagine you have 30 samples of an instrument and you don't know which sample is where. So you just place it 
here on an empty track. Again, I have here all the samples now with my mouse and now I drop it on an empty track. And here I can say sampler optimized map. And now it's analyzing again and immediately we have here our samples and can play it over the keyboard. That's a great feature. Thank you, Apple, for making a great job. So, but sometimes you don't have the time to cut your samples. You have a recording of six, like here, or let's say 20 samples, because you were singing some notes or you recorded it with the guitar. You just place it here in the optimized window, zone per note, and immediately you can play it on your keyboard. Isn't that amazing? So let's load another sample and see what else we can do. Let's take the man, we just place it here on this keyboard. Feels so good. And now we can play it. Let's activate it. Immediately we see the waveform. Let's cut it a little bit here. Having, having you around. Have, having you around. Let's make the zone a little bigger. Great. Uh, maybe we want to make a loop. So let's activate the loop. We go here to forward. Uh, we can move the left side of the loop. The right side we don't see because it's too much on the right side. So let's move it to the end of the sample or maybe here. So how can we make it more perfect? Let's take a crossfade. Or maybe we play it forward and backward. So maybe you say now this is not useful. Oh, this is very important. Let's take just a road sample. And we want this to loop the sample forever. So let's activate the forward loop. And let's loop the last, something like the last second. Sounds good for me. We need a crossfade. Maybe we can make it a little bit longer. So let me guide you a little bit through the sampler. Uh, here we have some possibilities to change our user interface. If I want to see the synth, I just click on synth. If I want to see the modulation matrix, I just click on it, the modulators, the mapping, the zone. And if I don't want to see something, I can hide it just by clicking this button here. Let's start with the synth. Here we can, for example, pitch our sample the whole sampler, make it higher or lower, or fine tune it a little bit. We have two filters. Let's turn off the first filter. Give it a little resonance, a little drive. Let's turn on the second filter and make it here. You see you have a lot of filter possibilities. Let's take a high pass filter. And we also can decide if you want to use one after the other or if we want to use them parallel. Then we can blend between filter 2 and filter 1. Okay, let's stay with the filter one. Here we can change the volume or the panning. We come later to the modulation matrix. Let's take a look here to the modulators. Let's click here on modulators so we see them a little bit better. We have here the release time. This is very important. This is what is happening if you release the key. 
So now it's short and now it's fading away. We have the attack time, so it's coming slowly. And we have sustain and decay. You can change this in numbers, here the decay time in milliseconds, or the sustain here in percent, or you can change it directly in the graphic. If you want more possibilities, no problem, we can also go to a DAHDSR. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Okay, for now, we just stay with the simple ADSR. You have a second envelope and you have a LFO. So what can we do with this? For this, we need the modulation matrix. In the modulation matrix, we can say, with the envelope, I want to control the pitch. Let's try this. Um, envelope two at the moment is controlling the cutoff, but we want to control the pitch of our sampler. So we go here. And now we need some amount. How strong do we want to have this? Let's change the envelope to We hear it a little bit better if we change from envelope 2 to LFO1. So now LFO1 is connected to the pitch. Ah, here with the amount, you can say how strong we want to do this. You can here control the rate, how fast we want this. This is one time per second, means one hertz. Or much faster. You can come in with a fade. Let's do this. So it's coming slowly. And you can change the mode. So how does it look? Or random. Or we can make it in time. We click this note here and now it's synced to our tempo clock. So now every eighth we have a pitch control. But this does not sound so nice. Uh, why don't we try something a little bit more useful? Let's control the cutoff of the filter one with a normal sign. Oh, this sounds nice. Maybe a little fade in. Not so strong. Let's add some reverb to make it a little bit nice. There's a last thing I would like to show you, and this is the slice mode. Let's take the sample of the man. Let's drop it into our window. This time we go to chromatic, split at slice. Now it was detecting the silence between the samples and made three samples or four samples out of it. Here is number one. Feels so good. Let's make this a little bit faster. Number two. We don't need this. And the last one. So, there's a lot of fun you can have with it.
If you want to see more tutorials about Logic 10.5, then come to my YouTube channel, Thomas Foster Music Production. At this point, I say thank you for watching. Always stay creative. Cheers. My name is Thomas Foster and this is my YouTube or Facebook channel Thomas Foster Music Production, which is all about music production. Here you will find tutorials on the most important DAWs or music programs, the most important plugins and I'll show you how to produce the current sound of the charts and the clubs. If you have any questions about this video or more generally about music production, just write me in the comments. I'll answer all your questions. Of course, I'm also happy about the simple feedback or suggestion for another video. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my videos. At this point, I say thank you for being there. Always stay creative. Cheers.